Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. And today I want to talk about hedge funds. The reason being because, firstly, the hedge funds have been responsible in some cases for a lot of the volatility that we've seen in many of the markets recently. And secondly, because it's clear from a number of conversations and postings that people have made to the website that people don't really understand exactly what a hedge fund is. So let's uh, go at explaining that. All right, the name is obviously very helpful. We have hedge funds. The name tells you that uh, it is a fund, for startings, that involves, it gets involved in hedging. So what is hedging? Well, hedging, just judging by the expression to hedge your bets, it means it's a way of offsetting risk in a tr any trade or investment that you make. So let's take our, uh, our hedger. And his name is Dennis. All right, here's Dennis. Dennis is an adventurous investor. And uh, Dennis has got a number of uh, means at his disposal in order to hedge his bets. If he invests in debt, for example, he might take out insurance in the form of a credit default swap, CDS. If he, involves in, if he buys bonds or, or debt or of some kind or stock, he could short that stock, short selling. He might get involved in arbitrage. He might uh, get involved in options, puts and calls that can help him uh, deal with, uh, or help him to, to to offset his risk by making investments. Now, I'm not going to go into all of these things. A number of them we've actually explained in other whiteboard explainers that you can find on the website. But say that uh, Dennis decides after a short career in investment banking to start his own hedge fund. Well, the first thing he does is he goes to see his Uncle Sam. Now, well, it's the old uh, Uncle Sam here. It's a bit of a stern chap. And Uncle Sam says, so what is it you're going to be buying? And Dennis says, well, I want to I buy everything. I want to buy stocks. I want to buy bonds. I want to buy loans. I want to buy credit default swaps based on the government debt of, from Bhutan. I want to buy racehorses in Ireland, everything. And Uncle Sam says, well, in that case, you're going to be a hedge fund. And if you're going to be a hedge fund, there are some rules. OK, Dennis, says, so what are the rules? Well, the first thing, says Uncle Sam, is 65% of your investors have to be accredited. 65% right, accredited. Accredited investors. And what does that mean, says, uh, says Dennis? Well, Uncle Sam says it means that they have to be rich. And by rich, I mean they have to have more than a million dollars in assets. Or last year, they have to have made more than 200,000. And uh, next year, they have an expectation of earning the same. Or if it's a man and his wife, a man and his spouse, they have to earn more than 300,000 a year last year and be expected to earn the same in the coming year. Now, of course, Dennis knows that uh, there are church mice in New York who earn $200,000 a year, and after they've paid their mortgage, they can barely afford to shop at the, afford to shop at the, at the farmer's market. So he's quite happy with that arrangement. All right, uh, any other rules, he asks. And Uncle Sam says, well, uh, no, that's the only rule. OK, says Dennis. So he decides to take 10% uh, or so, something of, of the bonus that he got paid when he left Wall Street, which is about $4 million, and invest it in his own hedge fund. And he's going to call that hedge fund... Buccaneer Capital. It sounds like a very sexy name that he thinks should get a lot of attention in the press. And by the way, there was a hedge fund called Pirate Capital, which this has nothing to do with, uh, but you can read all about the adventures of Pirate Capital if you go to the website and uh, check on some of the links that we have there. Fascinating reading. Anyway, Dennis goes out and he decides to form Buccaneer Capital. And there's only one rule that, the, uh, that Uncle Sam has given him, which is about these accredited investors. So he decides to make up a few of his own rules. The first thing he decides to do is to invest a large personal stake. Okay, and His stake is, of, of course, $4 million. And the reason he decides that is because he, re he thinks that if he has a large personal stake, then more people will have incentive to join his fund. The second thing he decides to do is to have high minimum investments, okay, a high minimum level of investment. Why does he want that? Well, he knows that the more people that invest, the more fees he gets. But at the same time, large amounts are a lot easier to deal with than small amounts. So he decides to say, OK, so the minimum investment is going to be a million dollars. So that's his, that's his high minimum. So he goes out to a bunch of people and he says, investors, invest your money with me. I've invested $4 million. I'm looking for $10 million. You know, I'll invest your money and make you 15 20% over the next three years. And people invest for various reasons. One might say, wow, you know, Buccaneer Capital, that's a cool name. I'll give you $2 million. Somebody else might say, wow, you know, um, you're putting up $4 million of your own money. You must really know what you're doing. I'll give you $2 million. And then, you know, he goes to another person, you know, maybe his auntie, and she says, oh, you've always been one of my favorite nephews. I'll give you $2 million. So people invest for all sorts of different reasons in these hedge funds. But eventually he ends up 
with the 10 million that he's after. 10 million in total. But what he says to these investors is, thanks very much for $2 million, but you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing some fairly crazy investments. They're going to make you a lot of money, but uh, one of my new rules is that I am going to lock you in for a year. So first year lock-in. You can't get your money back for a year. And when that first year is over, I'm going to limit your redemption capacity. So I'm going to have infrequent redemptions, maybe once, every two, once or twice every year or maybe once a quarter. So we have infrequent <clears throat> redemptions, as they're called. You can only get your money out a couple of times a year or maybe four times a year. So he then goes out and he looks for his investments, and they can be whatever he wants. He can invest, as I say, he can invest in race courses in Ireland, he can invest in CDS, you know, backed by the Chinese, gov Chinese government bonds, whatever he wants to do. He can invest in absolutely anything. And he can use all of these hedging techniques. So he has a use of, use of hedging techniques. And he has a variety of investments. All right, and some some hedge funds, you know, just go. They decide to just invest in in a certain number of things. Maybe they'll only invest in in bonds, or only invest in bank debt, or only invest in stock. And some of them will only use one or two techniques. I mean, there are classic types of hedge fund called long short hedge funds, which will only invest in stock or bonds, and they'll go long on one side and short on the other to balance themselves out. The next rule he has is he says, you know what, you guys have invested all this money. That's great. I'm going to have to look after myself, of course, and I'm going to be guaranteeing you, say, 15 20% a year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 220, it's called, 2% of the, of the initial investment, and then 20% of any gains down the road. So that's his 220 um, gains for him. That's his income. All right, so that's his structure. But now, he's only got $10 million, and he goes out and he sees a lot of his uh, compatriots in, you know, Cerberus Capital or whatever, you know, these large hedge funds that are making all sorts of money, and he gets a little bit jealous. So what he then does is he goes to his bank, goes to good old Chase Manhattan Bank, as was, and he says, uh, guys, you know, I've got, uh, I've got $10 million here, I've got some great ideas, resources in Ireland, I can make loads of money, how about uh, giving me some more money, how about levering me up? And I say, okay, well, we'll tell you what, we'll lend you $50 million, so give you a $60 million fund. So these guys give him 50, 50 million. He's got 10 million, which means he is now five to one levered, or levered five times. Okay, so the last thing that this guy has got in his fund is leverage. So here's a list of all the things that hedge funds, this is the characteristics of the hedge fund. Firstly is the hard and fast rule, the accreditation. Secondly, most of them have large, put in large personal stakes. They have a high minimum investment, often between 250000 to a million dollars is the minimum investment. Usually the first year is locked in and you can't get your money back. There are infrequent redemptions thereafter. These guys use all sorts of hedging techniques. The world is pretty much open to them. And they have a variety of investments that they can invest in, pretty much anything they want. Most of them use this structure where they, they, gain, they earn 2% on the initial investment and then 20% on any, uh, any earnings in the fund. And the, mass, the majority of them in the past have used leverage, although this is less common these days. Also, the fee structure is coming down as well. So those are the main characteristics of the hedge fund. The thing that we're worried about these days, and the one reason that hedge funds are in the news so much, is because of the infrequent redemptions and the leverage. Okay, what's happened is, say you have a hedge fund that only has redemptions four times a year. Well, the hedge fund calls up its investors and said, okay, redemption time is coming up. You need to let us know if you want your money back. And of course, because the market's in the state that it is, and so many investors want to be in cash and don't want to be involved in the market because it's sinking like a stone, they say, we want our money back. And they're doing it by their hundreds of thousands. And as a result, hedge funds are finding that there's a run on hedge funds, essentially. And hedge funds are finding that in order to make this money back, they have to sell almost everything that they have in the fund. Now, of course, because they're leveraged up really, really high, as soon as they start selling hard, it means that they're in real danger of losing their principal. But they don't really have a choice because they're, they're committed to giving these redemptions. Well, when I say committed, there's, of course, one other rule, which is that there really are no rules apart from this one. So a hedge fund can always turn around to its investors and say, you know what, we're going to lock you in. And we're going to say to you, you can't get your money back at all. We're going to hold on to the fund 
going to allow no money to come out of the fund until such time as the market has risen back up again, and we feel that we can sell our assets at a reasonable price. Firstly, not drive the market down, and secondly, get a fair price for the assets so that we can actually pay you back when you want re your redemptions. So they're locking people in until the, uh, until the market settles down. This is necessary because if they don't lock in, then they're going to have to make these sales because of the leverage in the accounts and the fact that people want their money back, they're having to sell things very, very quickly. This is one of the reasons that we're seeing so much volatility in the market now, because the hedge fund has realized that it has to give its money back. It's got to sell everything in its portfolio, the price of which has already gone down. So once it starts to sell and sell hard, it's driving the prices of things down further and further and further. And that's leaving everybody in the market, both hedge funds and investors, badly needing a drink. <laughs>